you know, Kevin runs really good there. I know him well enough to know that he's going to go there with still a chip on his shoulder from what happened. N- no. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get out and beat on his spoiler today. I <laughs> Did I say that I know him enough to know that he will be there like that? So I would say that, it, it, to me, I think Kevin is going to have a little bit of an upper hand on the 22 going into the The, the upper hand was shown on Sunday. Yeah. At, I think at Phoenix okay. because they had some things go wrong. They did. Okay, when they had that flat tire, nobody panicked. They kept their composure. They got their lap back and very methodically worked their way back into a position where all of a sudden it looked like they actually had a shot to win. I think it was a great test as far as the communication as well as Harvick showing he's got nerves of steel. He is the leader of that group. I know we talk about Rodney Childers, but let's face it, if Kevin wills it, it's probably going to happen. And I think that's where the 22 is going to run into trouble. That miscue they had, and I think it was an air pressure-related problem with that left rear tire, yeah. somebody made a mistake right there, and they paid for On it. On the flip side, though, can that four pit crew go to Miami <laughs> and have a trouble-free <laughs> hey, day hey, on hey, no, 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 they can't. You forget something. Now, all of a sudden, all the teammates are off and out of the picture. I can go down there and cherry pick if I need a player or two out of here. That's They've the, got a week yeah, to that's work the on it, one thing. and they can do it. They Stuart can Haas it has had all four of their drivers in line right. until now, and, and now it's, it's kind of all about one guy. Let's go around. We're out of time in this segment. Let's go around. Who are you taking, four 22? Four. Four. Yeah, I'd have to take the four. The four. You sticking with the 22? I'm not going to jump ship now. I'm going to stick with that 22. 22. What do you say, Bobby? I'm going to go with the four. Okay, that makes my life really easy. If if you had said the 22, we were going to go in the back room for a moment. Okay, Bobby? So now we pair off the Toyotas, Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. Who do you like out of that duo? Can can I put somebody on the spot? Because during the break, he was bragging about what was going to happen. So you believe the 78 is going to be able to outdo the 18? Oh, yeah. It'll be 78, 18, 4, and 22. That'll be the finishing order. Good night, everybody. Let me tell you why. I think that 78 bunch, I think they want to go out in style. This is their last race together for Barney Visser. I think they'd love to give Barney another championship trophy before they all go their separate ways. And I know Cole Pern, and I know Martin Truex, and I know how they ran down there last year. I believe that 78 will be on fire when he gets to a Homestead next week. How much does that emotion weigh in in this situation, Larry? Yeah, I, I definitely believe, I agree with Daryl, that nobody wants to probably go down there and win it any more than, than that race team and Martin and Cole. They definitely want to give that to Barney Visser before they move on to their next venture. But it, it, I just, I don't know. I, I keep thinking about things outside of the racetrack. And I think about the 18 pit crew and the 78 pit crew. I kind of go back to the 22 and the four that we spoke about in the last segment. And I just, the 78 has speed. Contrary to what I was saying probably in the early part of this playoffs, this this, uh, announcement has not affected them. But I still see hiccups when that 78 comes to pit road. And we know there's going to be a lot of pit stops on Sunday afternoon. Every time that yellow flag waves, it's going to be four more Goodyear tires. Can they nail it every single time and be mistake-free? Where are you at with this group, Bobby? Well, I like the 18. Obviously, that's a great number I've been associated with. I, love, I like Joe Gibbs Racing. A little prejudice, sorry. I, I am. Yeah. But I'm also saying that I have worked with Cole Pern, and I have uh, been a teammate to uh, Martin Truex uh, for a year. Uh, and I, I watch those guys, and, and I just I feel like there's a lot of uh, emotion going there. And uh, I, I feel like... As fast as the 18 car can be at times, the 78 can be the same way. I think when you come down to crunch time, I agree with Daryl. I know Cole Pern, those guys, uh, they're going to be, they're going to lay it all out there this weekend. I think they're going to have the upper hand on it because they, they have had a fast race car putting it together for Homestead. I think they can do that. You know what will make a difference? I think qualifying is going to make a huge difference. If that 78 wins a pole, and I think he will, yep. he gets that number one pit stall. That takes a lot of pressure off a pit crew. And that, that pit crew, they can fold under pressure. We've seen it across. Four is a good example of that. But I think if that 78 wins the pole, gets that number one pit stall, I think he's on his way. Hey, let me ask you a question, both of you. What race were you watching on Sunday? Because the one that I watched, I watched a guy drove into victory, drive into victory lane for how many times now, Larry? Uh, that would be eight. <laughs> number eight. <laughs> uh, that pit crew did an amazing job all day long. And I'd like to point out one other thing. What won him that race? 
restarts. Mm -hmm. That son of a gun is unbelievable when it comes to restarts. Yeah. In the end, he's going to wind up wearing the rest of the field out. He is going to be one of those guys that's going to be hard to handle. Adam Stevens has not got... He's not giving any kind of ground to anybody as far as a crew chief either. He can get this man and keep him happy. They're coming in with momentum. I don't know what races you're watching, but to me, that's the guy I'd be worried the most about when you get to Homestead. The race I watched was the one they ran there last year. They only go there once a year. And I saw that 18 car chasing that 78 car to the start, to the finish. 78 car is not going to be there next year. The guy driving it is going to be driving for this man right here, and these people here, it's not going to work. We're out of time. Thank you, Daryl. We're out of time. You say 18. Daryl says 78. Bobby, you agree with 78. And and 18. You say 18. And uh -huh. and so so this one's left to me. Yep. And and I got to tell you, six eight weeks ago, I would have said this is a no brainer. The 18 is it. Yeah. But the fact that the 78 has made it to this point yep. and in position again, I say it's all about Martin Truex Jr. I'm batting a so, thousand on this. So we've video. gone to 16, <laughs> now to two. We're back in the playoffs war room, and the time is now to say who will be the champion in 2018. We've got it down to two players, Kevin Harvick. Or Martin Truex Jr., Bobby, who do you like? I'm going to say Kevin Harvick's going to be the one that takes home the trophy. Let me tell you why. Last year at Texas, he took the lead from the 78 car, and that changed the whole complexion right there. The 78 car, he, when he went by, he must have took that horseshoe or something because <laughs> he was so fast. And I thought that is where Kevin started that role in the dominance that he took away from the 78. 78 strong, got to the final four, but at the same time, the four is going to be the one that beats him at Homestead. I know the pit crew, I know there could be a lot of different factors into it, but I think it's going to come down head to head. When Kevin Harvick races Martin Truex, Kevin's got the upper hand this time. Yeah, I could make a case for either one of these drivers, but I could also make a case why not either one of these drivers, and we've already talked about the pit crews, but I think when I look at those two drivers right there, head to head, Kevin Harvick and Martin Truex Jr., I'm going to have to go with Kevin Harvick. I just think he's going to be going to Miami a little bit on a mission, a lot like he was in Phoenix on Sunday until he had the tire issue, and I just think he's going to throw caution to the wind, and it's, it's definitely not maybe his favorite racetrack, but it's one of his favorite racetracks, and he's won more races on mile and a half tracks this year than any of these other drivers. So we have a Kevin Harvick? And we have a Kevin Harvick. <laughs> Where are you going, Daryl? I think I have a pretty good idea. No, I'm going to go with the 78. And, and, and every, these guys all have big toolboxes. They've all got pit crews. they got magic wands. they got everything in the toolbox to make their car do what they want it to. But I think it starts on Friday, like I said a little bit ago. Qualify on that pole. Get on that pole. Get that number one pit stall. Takes the pressure off the driver. Takes pressure off the crew chief. Takes the pressure off the pit crew. We've seen the 78 have trouble in the pits. And we've seen the four have trouble in the pits. But I really believe because of the, based on what the 78 did down there last year, that's one of his best racetracks and he will prevail. He will be a repeat champion. I like your thought process. I feel for you. But this is one of them times, boss man, you're wrong. The four car, I'm agreeing with Larry and Bobby when it comes to the fact he is going to be the man who can handle the pressure. I don't care about who the crew chief is on the box. I think Kevin will be able to kind of like handle that situation. The pit crew, they're going to fix it this week. Talk about being fast come Friday. He's already showed me at a place like Phoenix. He can be good enough to get back on that pole, and he's been the man when it comes to a mile and a half this year. Now, you, Kevin now you know how I felt yeah. earlier in the show. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, brother, but this ain't Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I will say this. When, when you look at the mile and a half numbers, in 2018, and, and all of these guys have been pretty good in that category, but Harvick has been the, the, the separator when you look at the mile and a half and, and won our most recent event at Texas Motor Speedway a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, but the, the 78 could have had a couple of more wins. Uh, you know, he could have won the Roval. Uh, he could have won a couple of other races, but had uh, things go wrong right at the end of the race. Got spun out at to Martinsville, or, or almost got spun out at Martinsville. So the 78, I just think that team is going to be playing with a lot of emotion. You're, you're, I know he's right. come hard. close, but, but I think yeah. we all agree probably for the fifth consecutive year you're going to have to go down there. You're going to have to win the race. Win. That's something that 78 has not done since July at Kentucky Motor Speedway. Hey, Daryl. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Daryl, I'm really sorry because you're in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And you've won three championships. Yeah, go ahead. But, but in, in this room, everyone's vote counts one. And therefore, three to one says Are you it's going to be Kevin Harvick who wins the championship Boy, it hurts in me to 2018. Do I love Kevin. He's a great guy. And I, 
I think that's a great team. For Kevin, it'll be his second title. Of course, he won it back in 2014.